G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now, there's a lot of things going on in the world right now and a lot of them are really disappointing and depressing. I know, and, and, and far be it from me to bring any more disappointment and depression to you. But um, unfortunately, that's where my thoughts went this week. And I thought about the most disappointing model that I ever built. It completely put me off the manufacturer. In fact, I won't build their kits anymore. I, I did have a few in the stash. I, I think there's one left, which it's only because it's a unique subject and they're the only ones that do it. So, you know, you're kind of stuck with it. But I really, really was so disappointed. I felt ripped off. I felt betrayed. I felt so pissed off with this manufacturer that I thought, why would you build these kids? Why do people get so excited about them? I hate them. What am I talking about? Well, I think I'm going to have to give you a bit of history to lead you up to this point where suddenly I'm presented with what should have been a really nice build, but it was horrendous, it was boring, it was overpriced, and it was just crap. Want to know more? Roll the music. <laughs> So, this tale, where did it begin? Well, it began about nearly a decade ago when I first came back to the hobby. And uh, I found myself without a wife uh, after knocking off about three of them. Uh, no, I didn't kill them. <laughs> they just took all my money, took all my stuff and left me with a shirt on my back three times in a row, which is why I'm the poor model maker I am today. But that's another story. No. So here I was, didn't have a partner, given up on girlfriends, you know, completely fed up with the whole bloody dating scene. And so my whole life up to that point had been based on going out, basically, you know, running around after females and being a romancer. I was, you know, I was quite the boy for doing that when I was younger. But anyhow, here I was in my um, 50s, early 50s, and no girlfriend, no wife, nothing like that. And kids weren't talking to me and, you know, pretty alone. And uh, didn't have much work, so I didn't have much money. And I'm just sitting at home thinking, well, I can't really sort of afford to go out. I can't afford to do much. can't afford to travel. What am I going to do? And I was watching TV, free to wear, because I couldn't afford subscription at that stage. But I watched a, um, a movie about the sinking of the Admiral Grash Bay. After watching this movie, I sort of had a eureka moment. I thought back to younger times in my youth when I was very sick and I didn't play sport and I stayed home a lot because I was unwell. I had chronic bronchitis. I was, you know, quite a weak young man. And um, I remember what gave me joy. And I used to build kits. I used to build everything, Airfix, you know, I could get my hands on. Anything that I could, you know, get my dad to buy me. And I was living up in the hills of Perth, a place called Kalamunda. And the only model shop was really down in Perth, although I used to buy a little um, aircraft in the bags from the newsagent. But anyhow, I um, I built battleships. I really loved the ships. And I built the Shine Horse and I built the Bismarck. And I built everything, right? But the one ship that I'd never built out of the Airfix collection was the Grash Bay. So I just watched this movie about the Grash Bay and I remembered I'd always been looking for the Grash Bay and never got that Airfix kit. And I thought, well, I've got all this time on my hands and I don't have a lot of money. Maybe I can pick up an Airfix kit. Surely they're not expensive. I mean... It's not that expensive a hobby, is it? <laughs> yeah, 10 years later, and yeah, it's cost a bloody fortune. But anyhow, at that time, I thought, okay, this could be a solution. This could be something to do. And um, and I remember those happier times, you know? So rather than, you know, going to my second childhood, as you do in your middle ages, uh, middle ages? Well, in your middle age, although I have done the middle ages thing. I was a knight for many years in a historical movement. That's another story. Anyhow, so... I went down to a local hobby store, which was a toy world, actually, um, where I lived. And uh, I looked through the shelves, and they didn't have the grass spade. I sort of asked, and they went, no, we don't have it. It's pretty hard to get. You know, they, they don't really make it anymore. These are all the ones we've got. And so I sort of had a look through, and I mean, I was looking at Airfix, because I knew Airfix, built Airfix as a kid, and I was really you know, thinking of building Airfix ship. This was something that I knew. It was nostalgia. I was, you know, going back. Didn't need a sports car, you know. <laughs> I was going to do an Airfix kit. So I had a look through and, uh, you know, some of them weren't cheap. They were sort of $40, $50. But they had the Warspite. It was only $20. And the Warspite 
Airfix Warsaw, the 1601. It had been the first ship that I'd ever built. My father bought it for me. The first year that I started modelling and I was buying kits from the um, local news agent and I'd built the Spitfire and I'd measures mitts and all the rest of it. And I was saving up the pocket money, buying one every month. So at the end of that sort of year for Christmas, um, Dad bought me the War Spite. And he picked it because he had walked on the decks of the War Spite when it had birthed at Durban in South Africa after World War Two. So, um, you know, he'd actually been up and down. And Dad went on to become a sailor. Or he might have been a sailor at the time, I'm not sure. But Dad was a sailor, he's in the uh, South African Navy. And so he had been on the war spot, he'd walked all over it, he knew the ship, and he was pretty thrilled to find there was a kit of the ship, and so. So I got this war spot and I built it. And I thoroughly enjoyed it, and that started me building lots and lots and lots of Airfix kits. And, you know, I built about everything in the Airfix catalogue as far as ships went. I even got into the sailing ships, as I've talked about in other videos. Anyhow, so I bought the war spot kit, and I took it home. I remember to buy some glue, and I sort of bought some paint. Um, you know, I bought a rattle can of red because I knew I'd have to paint the hull. I figured that most of it was grey, didn't they? Then I just bought a couple of other colours to touch things up, and I bought some beige for the decks. You know, where I went, and I had a ball. I had a ball building this thing. I mean, it's a very ordinary kit. You know, uh, I've still got it. It actually got broken in transit, and I actually have all the upgrades for it that I've found over the years. And it's my plan one day to strip it all down and build it all up again and make it really good, all right? Because, you know, the Airfix kit is lacking, but the Airfix kit is over half a century old, you know? It's pretty basic in their collection. So I built that, and, and, and I thoroughly enjoyed the experience, but then I'd sort of been watching YouTube clips and getting the whole modelling scene, and I knew there could be more. So I found a Graf Spey. So I was still on the whole, I want to build the Graf Spey thing, but I watched actually Guido Hop. I don't know if you've ever seen his channel. It's fantastic. He hasn't done anything in years. But he did a whole series on building the Academy Grash Bay. I managed to find a trumpet at Grash Bay, which is a much better kit. And I bought that. And that is still 99% done. I still haven't put the last of the photo itch on it. But we'll talk about that another day. But I started building the trumpeter Grash Bay. And again, fantastic. Really enjoying it. You know, it was a step up from my Airfix kit. It was much more modern moulding and crisper and more detail. I bought all the aftermarket stuff for it. You know, after encouraged online by everybody. you got to have metal barrels. you got to have this. you got to have six tonnes of photo itch. And um, that kind of brought me to a grinding halt. I was enjoying the build, but I'd taken on far too much photo itch for this was, you know, just coming back to the hobby. And I just went, oh dear, this is, you know... I mean, I was never much into metalworking. I didn't like metalwork at school. I was a woodworker. I like building things out of wood. So wooden ships, yeah, I'll go to great detail and everything. But metal, at that stage, photo etch was unknown to me and I couldn't handle it. I needed a break. So being at an impasse building this Graf Spey, I did what every modeler does. You buy another kit, okay? <laughs> um, you know, I, I had a few in the stash. I bought a few dragon kits on special. And uh, I bought a Panzer II, but when I opened the box, I went, God, this thing's tiny. I'd never really built much armor. I only bought it because on special, I got it for like a couple of shackles. It wasn't much. A very intricate kit and very interesting. It, um, you know, I thought, goodness me, it's just, <laughs> that's a tiny thing. So I went shopping again. And this time, instead of online, I went back to Toggle, to this hobby shop where I bought the, the war spike because it was pretty cheap. And they had a special on. And I found a cyber hobby, Panzer IV Kugelwitz, right? Which is any aircraft Panzer IV version. And cyber hobby is kind of like Dragon, but in some ways they're easy to build. At least they used to be. Back then they were simpler kits. They were sort of rejigged old Dragon kits with a few things added. So it had magic tracks. It had a little bit of photo etch, uh, but just enough to cover some grills and do some simple stuff that was capable. It had a good selection of parts, not as many as a trumpeter, but still it was a, it was a good kit, you know? And I thoroughly enjoyed building it, and I got a terrific result. I loved it. The only aftermarket that I put on it is I didn't really like the barrels that were in the kit. So I bought these other barrels, which really weren't for it. And my kit, well, my build became a what if. But again, I was just building a Panzer IV because I enjoyed it, and they were AA barrels from another um, vehicle from that period. So they could have fitted, they could have been used, but I don't think they ever were. It didn't matter. I had fun, and I went, oh, armor's quite good. And I'd never really built armor. I'd never, you know, as a kid, closest were karmas. Dad had bought one Christmas. He bought my brother the Airfix 
set of soldiers. They must have been 32nd or whatever scale they, they did. And uh, they were soldiers for the British um, Africa you know, group, those sort of things. British desert rats, whatever. Um, and I got the Germans, but not the German Africa Corps. I just got standard European Germans in their Panzer Grey uniforms, you know, so it sort of wasn't a complimentary set that would do battles. We didn't care. We painted them all up, um, mainly me. David didn't really do much. We painted them all up, and um, then we had sort of battles in the sandpit because that was my brother's big thing. He loved the sandpit. He used to get down there and create little forests out of all twigs off the trees and sort of things, you know, and then he'd get his little bulldozers in and bulldoze them all down, you know. And, and that's probably why he became an engineer and he's completely responsible for global warming. But that's another story. <laughs> so we had these toy soldiers, and, and, you know, as most kids have, you know, and they went bad. And Dad came home with... Um, a list of instructions for a, a board game to do mock war. So you didn't, you didn't really. The board was pretty easy. It was just a marked out square thing, you know. And um, basically, you just had your soldiers on them, and there were points and a dice roll and all this sort of stuff. But included in it, you could have armor. So um, we ended up getting a couple of kits. We had, I think my brother got this little Sherman clip together kit, and, and it was quite cute. I, I really liked it. I like the look of Sherman. I was given a more complicated to build Panzer. Um, tiger, right? The tiger, big tiger thing. I don't think the scales are compatible. I think like one was forty-eight and one was thirty-second. I don't know. They um, certainly the Panzer tank was huge, but then again, maybe they are when you put them right next to a Sherman. I've, I've never actually done the exercise. As I said, I don't really build a lot of armor. I, 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 I didn't. So anyhow, we had these couple of tanks, and we had these things, and we used to play this board game and you know, have these little battles, and, and that was my entire experience for armor. For 40 years <laughs> and that was it that was all i all i did i mean i built cars later on i built porsches and jaguars and things like that you know but i didn't really build tanks didn't so anyhow i would got that panzer II and it was too small and it looked too fiddly you know so i picked up from hobby world toy world this um panzer four kookaboots and i thoroughly enjoyed the build it had about 300 parts but that included about 100 of which were magic tracks and even the magic tracks, which first scared me, I, I actually ended up working out a really good method, which I ended up sharing and later on making videos about after I perfected it even further. And that became my stock standard way for doing magic tracks or any kind of indie links or single links on any sort of armored vehicle. And a lot of people have really enjoyed the method that I came up with, which was sort of a mixture of a number of other people's ideas. And I came up with something that really put them all together. And it's so simple, and so easy to do. But So there's that. And, okay, so I thought, okay, armor's good. I'm enjoying this armor. This is a nice break from doing the ships, all right? That's basically all we're getting to. So, again, I'm watching TV. A TV seems to be inspiration as to what model I'm going to build next. I don't know if that happens to you. You watch a movie or something. Oh, that was interesting. Oh, I want to build one of those. And this is what happens. So, I watched a movie called White Tiger, which is about the Russians fighting this lone tiger that's all painted up in white camo you know winter camo sort of thing and it's been just coming out of nowhere and decimating their forces and then disappearing again you know like a ghost so um yeah the russians were all running around in t-34s i'd never seen t-34s i mean admittedly my armor experience was very limited i'd sort of learned about shermans i knew that there were some german tanks i knew about the tiger right but i didn't know anything about these russian tanks so these t-34s look fun you know they look really good and, and I sort of became quite enamoured with them after watching the movie. So I thought, oh, I want to buy a T-34. So this time, I went down to the, the Toy World. They didn't have anything, nothing like it, nothing at all. So um, they said, why don't you try up the road at the um, radio-controlled aircraft shop? Because they also sell model kits. So I didn't know about this. And it was one of those funny old little hobby stores that's um, it's really just kind of like someone's bedroom, you know, sort of like... You come in a creaky corridor and there's a room behind you know it's just, it's just it's just this tiny little area that sort of they've let because it's a, a nonsense part left over from a shopping center or something nobody wants it and so they fill it with model kits and things and becomes a quirky little place for all the, us modeling nerds to hang out so i went in there and it was mainly yeah radio controlled aircraft but they had two shelves fully stocked on one side aircraft on the other side armor and i don't know if they had any ships i didn't see any but um, I was in the market for the T-34. So I went in, I asked them at the counter, I said, 
do you have a T-34? I'd like to build one like the one in the movie, The White Tiger. They said, yes, we've got this T-34. You'll love it. You'll love it. It's a Tamiya kit. I knew nothing about Tamiya. Never built it. I built Rebel. I built Airfix. Um, I had a look at some Matchbox kits but sort of when I was coming out of my, my modelling phase. I hadn't really built much else. I was really just an Airfix guy, you know, with a little bit of Rebel thrown in now and then. So I said, well, are these Tamiya kits any good? Oh, yes, you will love them. You will build Tamiya from now on. You'll be thrilled. You'll be so overjoyed. It is fantastic. They are great kits. I went, well, okay, fantastic recommendation. Uh, the box was kind of small. I thought, well, okay, maybe they're a little, little more efficient. I mean, the Panzer IV box is like this. The Tamiya T30 box is like that. Now, I paid a lot of money for this kit. Now, in contrast, um, you know, to, to compare them, the um, Google bits I bought, I got for three shekels. Middle is normally four, it's on special for three. Okay, three shekels. So it's only about 20 odd dollars American. And, and it was good money for that, you know, with Magic Tracks, Photo Etch, you know, a good part count, plenty of detail. Here I am paying nearly double, right, the money for this supposed fantastic kit from this, you know, manufacturer that I'm supposed to love for the rest of my life. And I take it home and I'm thinking, yeah, the box is small. And I open it up. Where's the track links? Oh, there's these rubber bands. Oh, that's a bit disappointing. Some photo edge? No. What's all this battery indicator? The thing was a toy. It had been designed to put a little motor and batteries in. It was you know, run with a with a wire out of it with sort of a remote control, a, a wired remote control. You know, it, you're kidding. This thing's not really a model kit. This is just... A, a dinky toy thing, you know? And I sort of read up about it and everyone was going how inaccurate it is. And yeah, it's just basically a toy. And, you know, and the part count, I think it barely had 150 parts, if that, all up. So I paid double the money. I'm getting half the part count. I've got no individual links. There's no photo etch. The instructions, well, I look at the instructions and they were childish from my point of view because it was just, you know, one page and everything. It was like an Airfix kit from the 1950s, you know, with one exploded drawing, build it, that's it. And I didn't expect to pay $50 for that. You know, I pressed on and I did build it, but it left a huge sour taste in my mouth because, you know, bloody hell, how can they charge so much for a kit that it's not very good, it's not accurate, it doesn't have a lot of detail, It's it, it certainly doesn't have a lot of parts, it's got these crappy bloody you know, rubber band tracks, and really it was it was designed to be a toy. It's not a detailed scale model. It's just a toy. It kind of looks like a tech, you know? So I was pretty pissed off and very disappointed and, you know, felt I'd been kicked in the hip pocket on that one and I'd been ripped off. So that was my introduction to Tanya. And that was the thing. That kit just disillusioned me. Yeah, people kept telling me, Tammy is good, Tammy's good, you'll love it, Tammy is really nice, you know, you'll get, you know, you'll build a, that, the, don't worry about that old T-34, yeah, it's a really old kit, it's sort of the, you know, it's it's the dark horse in the back of their bloody closet, and, and you know, that it's it's just not what they are today. So later on, I built, what's a GPA, it's an amphibious sort of um, Jeep thing, you know. It was okay, I got it for $10, one shekel, so that was more the price, and it was okay, but again, it didn't really jump out at me. It really wasn't a challenge to build. It it just, it wasn't what I was used to. I was used to Airfix. I knew the foibles of Airfix. I knew I'd have to clean some parts up and I'd have to adjust some things. To me, that's what model making was. Model making was putting yourself into the kit. And admittedly, both the T-34 and the GPA, they did click together. But to me, that felt like it was a toy. I suppose by that stage, the rot had just set in. And, you know, it's like people that, build a bad Zvezda kit, and then we'll never build another one, right? And I built some bad Zvezda kits, and I might talk about those one day. But the Vag that I built, right? Beautiful kit, beautifully made, absolutely superb. You can't really fault it. It is quite good. There's a few little things to fix up, but I enjoy doing that. And I suppose this comes down to the whole philosophy of model making. And I've been told a lot of people like Tammy because they just want to get through the build process. Right? Get done. Get over with. It's not important. Just, you know, tammy our bloody thin. Place the part in. You don't even have to try a fit. You don't have to do anything. You just cut off the sprue. You put it in. You go, bang. It fits. No thinking required. All right? Hence the shake and bake. 
And if that's your thing, fine. That's because they want to get on with the painting, right? All they're really interested in is paint. You might as well become figure painters, guys, really. But they, they like the subjects, okay, because obviously they want the aircraft and the armour and everything. But they just want to get that build over with, quick, done, you know, knock it over in a bloody day or so or two, and then get on with the painting and the weathering and all those things that they thoroughly enjoy. Whereas I'm the opposite. I really don't enjoy the painting. <laughs> I'll do it. And I kind of get into it. I try to get into it. And the weathering, you know. But I really can't spend hours and hours and hours and hours chipping a tank, right, to me. No, I don't mind putting track links together and doing all that. There's certain an art and magistry in it, but sitting there with a tiny little thing going chip, 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 chip. Oh dear. Oh my. Really, guys? Really? No, it's just it's too boring. It's just too boring for me. No. So for me, it's all about the build. That's why you'll see on my channel that I'll take kits and I'll change them because it's the build that I'm into, and I've become more and more into to scratch building and really getting stuck in and completely changing kits, you know, like I've done with the with the Airfix um, St. Louis, right? And even though it was an absolute wreck when I got it, that didn't phase me because it was a challenge. It was a challenge that I knew lurking in there was a really nice ship. And and it's come along really well. And I wish I could get back to it. I'm kind of stuck doing you know, battleships and things at the moment, but I really want to get back to finishing that Airfix St. Louis. And the same with wood kits, you know, you spend a lot of time fiddling and faffing about and shaping everything. You don't just cut it out, glue it, you're done, all right? Every part has to be shaped. Every part sort of blends into the next thing, the rest of it. And you have to use a sense of craftsmanship to, to build them. And, and that's kind of it. I come, I've got woodworker's hands, right? I've got little square palms and very short stubby fingers, okay? Okay? Makes it very hard to pleasure myself, I can tell you. <laughs> but... I've got carpenter's hands, and I've done a lot of carpentry in my time. I've built a lot of furniture, and I, you know, I've done a lot of woodwork. And that's kind of what I did. In between the years of not modelling, I was building life-size things. I was building sets for, for television and theatre, and I was renovating old houses and you know, restoring old motor cars and that sort of thing, always shaping things and doing things with my hand and doing a lot of woodwork. So for me, Tamiya has been a huge disappointment, and I'm yet to find a kit of theirs that I really can get excited about. I do have the S600 there that Jim Stein gave me. I love the subject, only because that's one of the cars that I restored. I restored an S600 from a barn find. So I'm hoping I can build that and I'll enjoy that as a Tamiya kit. But everything else, I mean, I try to build the Fifel, you know? Um, that's the um, the Arrow, the Airfix, uh, sorry, the, the Tamiya Arrow. But I just got bored. I got, got as far as the interior and <gasps> fell asleep. Try to build the Messerschmitt, fell asleep. I've had a few other things I've done and... I don't know, I just don't get Tamiya. It doesn't work for me. It doesn't necessarily mean they are bad kits. I've never said that, right? They're not bad kits. They're, they're beautifully engineered. They go together well. They're just boring, okay? At least the ones that I've experienced. And I know there'll be comments about, oh, look, if you build this buddy thing, you know, it's, it's really complex and it's difficult to build. Yeah, I know. I've heard there are a few that you can really sink your teeth into and they're quite... Um, quite sort of intense builds you really can get into. I've never experienced them. And the trouble is, after I've been through about half a dozen Tamiya kits and not enjoyed a single one, why would I bother? All right? Whereas, even with Zvezda, I had sort of one bad Zvezda kit and then a kit that wasn't too bad and then a kit that was brilliant. So, you know, and with Dragon, eventually I started to love Dragon despite all their foibles, okay? And with Trumpeter, yeah, Trumpeter Hobby Boss, there are some bad kits, but there are a lot of good kits and they're, they're very well made. There's always mistakes in them, which I like because things being wrong means I can scratch build and correct. And I suppose that's where I'm going with this. Tamiya does too good a job of their kits. They're too well made. They're too easy to build. And there's no challenge. There's nothing for Harry to do that he likes to do except paint. And he doesn't like to paint. I'll do it. But, you know, it can go like three months and I don't fire up the compressor. Um, or in this case, fire up the battery for the quarters. Because I'm not a painter, I'm a builder. So I'll build and build and build and build and build and then realise I have to paint a whole lot of kids. So that's just how it is. All right, well, I hope this hasn't distressed too many of you. They're probably all the Tamiya people have just clicked off by now and gone, you idiot, Tamiya's the best things in the world. Oh, hell, Tamiya. Tamiya thin, Tamiya thin. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, nah, not for me, mate. The Tamiya philosophy is lost on me. I don't enjoy their kids. But give me an old Airfix kit. Give me an old Revel kit, you know? Give me something I can sink my teeth into. As long as it isn't one of those bloody Russian art kits. No, that's where I draw the line. No, 
You know, and having no bloody ah in kits. No. All right. <laughs> That's enough of this. No doubt this will lose me subscribers. I don't care. You know, if you don't get the point of the joke, then you shouldn't be watching my channel. All right. Goodbye from Australia. And it's Huru from Harry Houdini.